Another property I'm going to create is Fresnel power. So let's just create a vector one um, property and give it a value of, let's say, uh, one. Drag and drop this into the graph and then connect this and output it into the power slot. So you notice that as I now change the Fresnel power, so let's set it to 10, there's hardly any uh, Fresnel being applied. So five, four, three, two, uh, 0 0.1, okay, that's a bit too much. But you can see that as you're then um, changing these values in the blackboard, um, this then end spider robot is, uh, or this uh, preview of the spider robot's head is getting that effect applied to it. So now we wanna go test it in our scene. So if I now select the save asset in the top left-hand corner, or the save asset button in the top left-hand corner of the graph, and bring the shader graph window down. You can see here we have our spider robot. I can select spider robots material and you notice that it's using the lightweight render pipelines standard shader. And by selecting the shader um, menu here, I can go down to this graphs menu, which has been created. And you'll notice here we have spider robot graph, which is, has the same name as the shader graph um, asset that we created. And I'll select spider robot graph and it will then take this shader or take this visual and then apply it to this mesh. So what you notice here is that we go into play mode. We now have our spider robot with a green outline. Um, we have these exposed properties here for now color and for now power. So we can actually tweak these in context to the scene. So let's make the robot instead be a, have a nice red rim lighting or for now effect can tweak up the value. So we've now got a red Fresnel around our spider robot who's currently just idling. So that kind of shows you how you can take uh, properties in Shader Graph and expose them so you have some high level control here in the material, but then you can go back to the graph and hook them up into different inputs and different nodes, kind of the wiring behind that material, that, that shader that the material is using. So our spider robot looks kind of bland with just this Fresnel effect. So now I'm going to apply a texture. So go back to the blackboard, select a texture uh, property, and let's just call this uh, spider texture. And drag and drop this property into the node workspace. So what you'll see here is that we have the spider texture and when we select this sort of node uh, connection, you'll notice that I can't actually plug this into the albedo slot, which some people are usually quite confused by because they said, well, we've got texture, we wanna output it through the albedo channel. And that's because we have to take the texture and convert it into RGB values. And then the RGB values can then be passed into the albedo slot. So the really cool thing that we've done to sort of try and not confuse people too much is when you select this connection, create a new connection and then let go, the create node menu is actually context-based. So it'll actually say, oh, you're trying to output a texture or try to create a node that a texture goes into. These are the nodes that it's compatible with. So it's gonna show you and filter you kind of exactly what you're looking for. So you don't have to go through all the menus and find the specific one for this texture. Now, if I go into the input slot, uh, input menu, and the texture menu, we have here the sample texture 2D node. And you'll notice here that the inputs will be a texture, um, some kind of UV uh, channel or UV uh, coordinates, and a sampler state. And we notice that the output takes the texture and converts it into a RGBA and also the individual color channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. Now I can grab this RGBA slot, um, create a connection, and output it to the albedo. Now you'll notice that when I connected it, it actually made the um, preview white. And that's because we haven't given it a texture at all. So the default is gonna be a white texture. And the really cool thing in Shader Graph is rather than sort of guessing what the texture would be, you can instead go back to the blackboard 
select the um, asset finder or the asset picker, choose an asset, in this case, uh, the spider robot texture, and you can see a preview of the texture in this sampler node, and then also a preview um, of the texture being wrapped around the mesh in this preview window. And if I then go back and modify color and modify the power of the Fresnel, so let's make this uh, really intense, so a value of one or a value of 0.3 even, um, you can then see that the texture is being combined with the emission and then we have this uh, orange glowing result. So if I click Save Asset again and go back to the scene, you'll notice that on the material inspector for the spider robot, we have this spider texture slot has been added because remember it's uh, corresponding to what's on this blackboard here. Now I can click select and then apply the texture to be used via the graph that this material is using. So that's kind of a basic way of uh, inputting in a texture, a color and a power to get a very simple Fresnel effect.